Today we're going to discuss pharmacology. A drug is any natural or synthetic substance that alters the physiological function or state of a living organism. A medication is a drug administered for therapeutic effects. There are OTC medications, which are over-the-counter. These can be purchased at your local CVS, Walgreens, Target, Costco, um, most stores. And then you have prescription medications, which require a provider order. The Federal Drug Administration provides approval for all medications that are released. And this is done through research and different drug trials. The Drug Enforcement Agency classifies drugs, which is also known as schedule of drugs, and we'll discuss that on a future slide. The DEA regulates the production of drugs and also provides individuals with a DEA number, which is a unique number given to people who prescribe and dispense drugs. Medication names. The chemical name describes the chemical components that make up the drug. The generic name is the official name of the active ingredient used by all manufacturers. The trade name is the brand or product name. So for instance, acetaminophen is the generic name. Tylenol is the brand or trade name. So brand versus generic. These are some examples of over-the-counter medications. The ones that can be purchased without a prescription with their brand name, the generic name, and then the purpose. So for the first three, analgesic, that means reduce pain. So you might take Advil or ibuprofen if you have a headache. This next slide goes over brand versus generic for antibiotics. So you have the brand name in this column, the generic name, and then the purpose, and all of these medications are antibiotics. Antibiotics are prescription drugs that are ordered for bacterial infections. They attack bacterial cells in the body. They are not prescribed for viral infections. This chart shows brand versus generic for controlled substances. So we have the brand name, the generic name in this column, the purpose, so the first several are analgesic, or they reduce pain. The last two are stimulants. They are used for ADHD. And then the schedule. These are more controlled substances. So we have the brand name, the generic name, the purpose, and the schedule. And we'll go over schedules in a moment. Some more controlled substances. So again, brand name. This column has the generic name, the purpose, and the schedule. So schedule one medications are not legal. So examples would be heroin, cocaine, PCP, and crystal meth. Schedule two has high abuse potential. There's special storage and reporting and require a prescription. Then three through five have less abuse of potential, but still require a prescription. Okay, these are antihypertensive and diuretic, diuretic brand versus generic. So we have the brand name here, the generic name here, and the purpose. So a diuretic is a medication that is prescribed to remove excess fluid from the body. And an antihypertensive, so these medications, are prescribed to manage high blood pressure. So hypertension or high blood pressure is a condition of the cardiovascular system where the pressure in blood vessels is too high. Both antihypertensive and diuretics are prescribed to manage these conditions. As previously stated, antihypertensives are prescribed to lower blood pressure and diuretics are prescribed to remove excess fluid from the body. Beta receptors are found on cells of the heart muscle, smooth muscle, airway, arteries, and kidneys, and are part of the sympathetic nervous system and lead to stress responses, especially when they are stimulated by epinephrine. Beta blockers, which are some of these medicines that end in the LOL, interfere with the binding of the receptor of epinephrine and other stress hormones, which weakens the effects of stress hormones. Calcium channel blockers 
to amylodipine stop calcium from entering the calcium channel. Calcium causes the heart and arteries to squeeze more strongly. By blocking calcium, calcium channel blockers allow blood vessels to relax and open. Okay, these are more antihypertensives. So angiotensin II receptor blockers, like Valsartan, block angiotensin II, angiotensin II, which causes vasoconstriction. By blocking angiotensin II, the blood vessels relax. And if you look, you can see the ending of this is sartan, and then this one is sartan. So you know that those both are angiotensin II receptor blockers. If we go back, then you see this. Krill is an ACE inhibitor, and then the LOL ones are beta blockers, and then the ones that end in PINE are calcium channel blockers. Okay, so here are some other medications. Um, Antihyperlipidemic lower cholesterol. So these are your first several. And then anticoagulants keep the blood from clotting. And then we have antacids, which neutralize stomach acid. These are some common abbreviations. AC is before meals. BID is twice a day. GTT, when that's written out, it just means drop. PO is by mouth. PRN is as needed. HS is before sleep. OD is right eye. OS is left eye, and PC is after meals. Um, some common routes of drug administration are enteral, which means administered directly into the GI tract, oral, which is by mouth, sublingual, which is under the tongue, rectal, which means it's, in, it's administered through the rectum, Parenteral is administ administration of medication bypasses the GI system, so it's subcutaneous, intramuscular, or intravenous. Inhalation would be an inhaler, and then transdermal is a medication that's placed on the skin via a patch. These are the rights of medication administration. The purpose of the rights is to achieve therapeutic goals, to prevent harm to the client, and to avoid any ethical or legal complications. When in doubt of any of the rights, you are not supposed to administer the medication, and you notify the supervisor if the medication is not administered. When documenting, the 24-hour clock is used, and we'll see information on that on the next slide. So the rights of medication administration are right client, right medication, right dose, right route, right time, and right documentation. So the 24-hour clock is the method of timekeeping that runs from midnight to midnight and is divided into 24 hours. It uses the numbers 1 through 24. It does not repeat numbers. Time is written in four digits, and it does not use a colon. The 24-hour clock helps to eliminate confusion, specifically the confusion between morning and evening. So this graph shows military time, which is the 24-hour clock, and then standard time. So you can see the a.m. and then the p.m. Okay, so let's practice. 7 p.m. when written in the 24-hour clock would be 1900, 1900. 7 a.m. when using the 24-hour clock would be 0700. 0, 12 a.m. when using the 24-hour clock is 0000. 0, 0, 0. And then 10 p.m. when using the 24-hour clock is 2200. Again, there's no colon used. Medications are classified a couple different ways. They can be classified by the body system affected. So if it, for instance, if it's a neurologic agent, like an anti-Parkinson's bed, it can be classified by the mechanism of action of the medications in the body. So like an anticonvulsant, it stops seizures. It can be classified by the disease the medication is intended to treat. So an antihypertensive is used for treating high blood pressure or hypertensive, hypertension. 
and they can also be classified by the dispensing classification. So if you recall, Schedule 1, those medications are not legal. They're in illicit street drugs. Schedule 2 has high abuse potential. Special storage and reporting is required, and then they also require a prescription. Schedule 3 through 5 have the least abuse potential but require a prescription. And then you have over-the-counter, which are medications that may be purchased without a prescription. They can cause harm or unwanted side effects, and then medication interactions are also possible. So we have ACE inhibitors with calcium channel blocking agents. So this combination is often used to treat hypertension. ACE inhibitors block the angiotensin, angiotensin or vasodilation, therefore a reduction in blood pressure. Calcium channel blockers block calcium from entering the cells of the heart and smooth muscle in the walls of blood vessels. Calcium forces the heart to contract harder. Next, we have antacids, which are a class of medications that neutralize acid in the stomach. Antacids contain ingredients such as calcium, magnesium, or sodium bicarbonate, which act as bases to counteract stomach acid and make pH more neutral. And they relieve the symptoms of GERD, which is um, gastroesophageal reflux disorder. We have laxatives which induce bowel movements or soften the stool. They're used to treat constipation. We have serotonin, norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors, or SNRIs. This class of medication is used in the treatment of depression, anxiety, panic disorders, and other mood disorders. They block or delay the reuptake of serotonin and norepinephrine, which are two neurotransmitters released by the presynaptic nerve. This increases the level of these neurotransmitters and tends to elevate mood. Next, we have selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, or SSRIs. SSRIs are antidepressants that work by increasing the levels of serotonin within the brain. Serotonin is a neurotransmitter that is often referred to as the feel-good hormone. It carries messages between brain cells and contributes to well-being, good mood, appetite, as well as helping the body regulate the sleep-wake cycle and internal clock. Examples include Lexapro, Selexa, Prozac, and Zoloft. Next, we have narcotic analgesics, which are the most abused. This is medicine that is used to provide relief from moderate to severe acute, acute or chronic pain. They are also called opiates, opioids, and narcotics. Narcotic analgesics work by binding to opiate receptors, part of the opiate system that controls pain, both pleasurable and addictive behaviors. Opiate receptors are more abundant in the brain and spinal cord but are also located elsewhere in the body, such as the stomach and the lungs. So pharmacology is the scientific study of the effects of drugs and chemicals on living organisms. It looks at how chemical agents, both, both natural and synthetic, affect biological symptoms. Systems. Pharmacokinetics refers to the absorption, distribution, metabolism, and excretion of drugs. So absorption is when the medication is introduced into the body. Distribution, the medication moves into fluids and tissues. Metabolism is the breakdown of the medication in the body. It occurs in order to eliminate the medication. And then excretion is removal of the medication from the body. So urine, the kidney conditions can affect excretion. It can be expelled through feces or air. Pharmacodynamics is the branch of pharmacology that is concerned with the effects of drugs and their mechanism of action. So it's the drug's action on the body. So for instance, you have serotonin syndrome can occur when tramadol, which is a pain medication, is added to an SSRI. So serotonin syndrome is caused by the buildup of serotonin in the body. Symptoms include agitation, insomnia, confusion, tachycardia, loss of muscle coordination, and hypertension. And that can occur when a patient is taking an SSRI, a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor, such as Zoloft, and then tramadol is added. These are some common prefixes and suffixes. We kind of went through them already. Whenever a medication ends in pril, it's an ACE inhibitor. LOL is a beta blocker. Sartin is an ARB. Statin has to do with cholesterol. The prefix pred is a steroid. Ozone is also a steroid. 
alone is a steroid, and then ones that end in VIR are antivirals. Again, some more prefixes and suffixes. Thiazide is a diuretic. Glyptin is an antidiabetic, so it's used to treat diabetes. Zepan is a benzodiazepine. Zodon is an antidepressant. Nozzle is an antifungal. Sept, that prefix, is an antibiotic. Filin is an antibiotic. Cycline is an antibiotic. Myosin, antibiotic. And phloaxin is an antibiotic. Again, some more prefixes and suffixes and their definitions. Oprozole is a protein pump inhibitor. Tidine is an H2 antagonist. And dipine is a calcium channel blocker.